What's up guys, Jace Two Cents here, and summertime is fast approaching, and that's the time a lot of people tend to build their new systems because they get graduation money, or they just have the summer off, and they wanna entertain themselves, and usually they wanna do it by gaming or upgrading their systems. Well, today we're gonna to try and head off some of those purchases by giving you guys some information that will make your purchases hopefully smarter and more intelligent, because today we're gonna to talk about something that gets really overlooked, and that is, are budget builds actually worth it? With its aluminum bezel, solid construction, and adjustable base, the vast 35-inch ultra-wide 100Hz VA panel from MassDrop offers performance at an affordable price. Learn more about this drop by following the link in the description below. Now budgets, what are they? A lot of people take the term budget and immediately just apply that to mean the cheapest build possible. And although that can be very true, you can have a $5 budget, you can have a $5 trillion budget like countries have. So let's go ahead and just come up with a universal understanding of the term budget, meaning you don't have a dollar above your set spending limit. That's what a budget really is. A budget just means all of your money is allocated towards various things. It has a purpose. It's meant to go in certain areas. And then your budget is then basically budgeted. But when it comes to computers, most people just have a total amount but they don't budget it to X dollar amount for the motherboard, X amount for the graphics card, X amount for the memory, which is how a budget truly would work. But most people don't do that, so hopefully today I can get you guys thinking in that sense so that you don't take your budget build and make it entirely not worth it because you sort of built it for today and not for the future, and then you're stuck later having to upgrade by changing everything out because you made poor choices today. So that's what we're trying to avoid with this video. Now what I have right here are some motherboard examples. Motherboards, like I said, are the easiest way to overspend. A lot of time there's features on here that you may be paying for that you're not gonna use. There may be features on here that you want and didn't get because you made poor budgeting decisions. So you can have this basic board right here, which is pretty much the cheapest Intel board you can get for, I think it's, a, what is it, 11, 5X, yeah, 1156 technically. Uh, you could, you've got four channels, which is actually pretty decent on here, but look at that. There's not many phases to this power delivery system, so you couldn't overclock and stuff with it. But you could put in this technically, what, like an 8700K if you wanted, or you could do the very same thing with this empty box, because there's no motherboard in there. <laughs> wait, wait. <laughs> There. Imagine how disappointed you would be if you opened that. Da, 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 da. Aww. We'll just pretend like that never happened. <laughs> it's upside down. There we go. The point I was trying to make is both of these motherboards, but the point I'm trying to make here is that you could spend 500 plus dollars on a motherboard and stick an i3 in it. These, both these motherboards accept the same CPUs. Should you put an i3 in this? But now that we talked about how you can really over, you know, buy on your motherboard versus your CPU, let's talk about the features that exist on motherboards and where it's okay to save money. This right here is an A320. I would, I would never really buy this, even for Ryzen, because every single Ryzen chip, whether it be the cheapest one to the most expensive one, is overclockable. Where on Intel it might make sense, because you can get a locked chip on Intel, which is very inexpensive, and there's no point in buying an overclocking motherboard on a non-overclocking chip. But AMD is sort of a different story because every single chip is unlocked. And what you're gonna notice here on the build quality between this guy is the MOSFETs are exposed, there's no active cooling on them. The chokes as well, there's no cooling on those. The MOSFETs up here, these little squares. That's the power delivery system. When you hear about phase power, like how many power phases there are, that is specifically what we're talking about. Those get very hot, that's delivering power to the CPU and, and stepping down 12 volt and all of that. But the next step up here with the B350, you can see we do get a heat sink on our main phase delivery right there, our power phase delivery. Still none up here at the top next to the chokes but at least a little bit of additional cooling. Now both of these motherboards look very similar, but they're actually quite different. Um, we already talked about the heatsink design on the power delivery, but if we look now at the PCI Express slots, you can see that the more mid-range one has a kind of a metal reinforcement on there, which gives it a little bit more strength and rigidity. Um, they both have two PCI Express 1X on there. Uh, this one has an additional slot at the bottom, which is kind of useless these days, which is a standard PCI. Nobody really uses PCI anymore on any modern capture cards or whether it be M.2 slots for PCI Express or whatever. Now, one thing that's worth noting on here, though, is this is a more intelligent design in terms of the spacing. They put one of the 1X above the graphics card, so you could put a capture card or sound card here, and then they spaced out three or two slots down the other one. That way, if you put a graphics card in here, which is a standard two slot, you can still utilize that one. Problem with this one here, is every single graphics card is at least two slot now. So as soon as you put in a graphics card, this one becomes useless anyway. So this one pretty much pretend it doesn't even exist. This one shouldn't even exist. Ironically though, the 
cheaper motherboard I think has a better layout in terms of SATA where they all face the same direction. Whereas on this guy here, two of them face up and then two of them face out, which I think is kind of awkward. But another sacrifice you make because these boards come in 50 bucks, 60 bucks range, just when you have like as low as like $40 if you, sure, if you really shop for it. They only have two RAM slots. So here's what that means in terms of future compatibility and where you could start costing yourself money. Now let's talk about uh, where you actually would end up costing yourself some money in the future if you ever wanted to upgrade this system. When people are shopping budget systems, they tend to, like I said, want to go as cheap as possible. And the cheapest DDR4 you can get now is eight gigabytes or two four gigabyte sticks. Now, a lot of people would do that because they want to use dual channel rather than getting a single eight gig. Now, if you did that, you would utilize both these slots because there's only two slots on each of these motherboards, meaning if you wanted to up that RAM capacity later, you've got to buy all new RAM if you didn't go with the single eight gig. Now, depending on what you're doing, you can often get away with single channel RAM and not really notice any difference when it comes to gaming and stuff like that by going with a single eight gig stick. So I'd recommend that if you have a dual slot board like this or a dual channel board with only one slot per channel. So make the sacrifice of dual channel down to a single eight gig rather than going with two four gigs if you think you're gonna upgrade later on. Otherwise, you're buying all new memory. So here's the AX370 from Aura. So this is obviously has all the features that you would want. Uh, it's overclocking capable. It's got passive cooling on all of the power delivery. It's even got a bigger chipset cooler on here. It's got four RAM slots, so you don't have to make the same sacrifices we mentioned before. You can do eight gigs and upgrade to eight gigs later with a total of four sticks. Three full-size PCI Express slots, so you can use SLI, Crossfire, multiple 1X. Um, yeah, so this one also has extra features like um, extra fan slot or fan headers, so you can plug in more fans. It's got a bunch at the bottom, a few at the top. It's got AIO cooler on there. It's got you know surface mounted buttons for start, reset. And whereas you can get a board that has similar features to this for around 100 to 115 dollars, if you can use the same motherboard for future upgrades then it makes sense to spend a little more now to get this than to spend a lot less now and get this and then later have to upgrade the motherboard and the RAM anyway. All right, so let's talk about CPUs. This is an area where I think a lot of people just get really confused on where they should be spending their money. Um, it depends entirely on what you're doing with your computer. So if you're just gonna be doing gaming though, you don't need as much CPU power as you might think. This is an i3-7100. This is what was kind of considered like the go-to budget CPU back in the 7 series. And then since then, AMD has really stepped up their game with like the 2200G, which is what we have right here. But it's really easy to overspend on your CPU, like I said, depending on what your use case is. So you wouldn't necessarily need to buy something crazy like an i9-9900K to play games unless you're starting to push your frame rates really high with a very high-end graphics card. So here we have two different graphics cards that live on the completely opposite end of the spectrum. The roughly $120 GTX 1050 and the $2,500 Titan RTX. If you pair this card with a terrible CPU, something like a 7100, that would be an absolutely terrible combo because what's gonna happen is the CPU has to prepare the frames for the graphics card. And the graphics card does all the eye candy and post-processing and stuff and sends it off to the monitor. If the CPU can't send the information to the card fast enough, the card has to wait, which brings down your frame rates. It goes all over the place, which is a terrible experience. So this pairing would be a whole lot better because this graphics card is not going to be necessarily slowed down by an i3-7100. Quick way to waste your money, obviously, would be buying a Titan X or a Titan RTX altogether. In fact, some people were even stupid enough to put two of them in their system. What? So a more logical pairing to either of these because the 1050 is definitely gonna start showing its age in more modern titles. Like things that have come out since RTX has sort of been announced and developed now like over the last seven months or so, games are starting to want to utilize more of the modern technologies that are found in graphics cards. So what I would recommend is kind of throw both of those to the side and get something more middle ground. Like what we have right here is a GTX 1660, or you could even pair it with something like uh, an AMD Radeon 590, which is gonna give you very good 1080p gaming experience. It's gonna be forward compatible with a lot of modern titles without feeling like your graphics card is suddenly becoming what's holding you back. And not only that, it's, it's fun to buy a more modern graphics card than buying an older tier one, because there are options that are available in current generations without completely breaking the bank. Now you might have noticed a bit of a theme here, and that being not buying the cheapest that's available, because in my opinion, that is the quickest way to overspend on your system. But that's not the easiest way to overspend on your system. Let me go ahead and show you what I mean by that. 
I present to you the quickest way to overspend in your budget. We're talking about RAM. What we've got right here are two different sets of RAM, Ballistics and the Trident Z Royal. So I, again, I chose two very opposite ends of the spectrum, similar to the Titan RTX and the 1500 or the 1050 non-TI. Now let's just say for instance here that these are identical in terms of capacity. This is technically eight gig kit, two times four, this is the 16, two times eight. But the capacity in this discussion doesn't matter so much as speeds and timings. I can pretty much guarantee you that even someone like myself who has used and experienced every single piece of equipment and stuff you see on this shelf behind me, in first-hand experience that I could not tell you the difference between two identical systems running 2400 megahertz CL19 versus 3200 megahertz CL15 of the same capacity. I guarantee you I would not be able to tell the difference in general workflow, gaming, or whatever. So save some money by buying basic RAM. Put a heatsink or something on there, you know, buy one with a heatsink, but don't overspend on something that's very boutique with like all of this crazy RGB and shininess. And don't be fooled by the word gaming. Trust me, anything that says gaming, just take it as a marketing gimmick because you can game on anything. So the last thing we're basically left to talk about here is storage because storage is gonna be a very subjective thing. Now what we have right here are two different types of two and a half inch storage devices. So this is a solid state drive right here from Inland Professional. It's the cheapest you can get. We, I think we paid like $40 for this 240 gigabyte. This is a spinning drive right here. And the only difference between the two of these is gonna be how long you're willing to wait for your computer to load and your games to load. So. If you're the kind of person that's like, I need to spend the least amount possible, like literally the least amount possible, then I would recommend getting a hard drive. But with prices being what they are now and SATA SSDs really getting extremely inexpensive because of the rise of M.2 drives, I still would usually recommend getting at least a 120 gigabyte or 128 gigabyte SSD because you can get it for like $25 now and then getting a large capacity, like one terabyte or two terabyte hard drive to put all your games and stuff on. And then just move your favorite game to your SSD, whichever one you're playing through. And then when you're done, move it to another drive or get rid of it all together and then have your OS on here as well. Then the last thing obviously is your case. Get whatever box you think is prettiest that fits in your budget. I mean, there's so many out there, I can't really help you with that. You can spend 20 bucks, you can spend $2,000 on a case. So obviously- You can spend zero dollars. You can spend zero dollars. On the box. Yeah, put, your, put it on the box, put it in a cardboard box. I don't know, maybe we should do a cardboard box case around here. Anyway, guys, I wanted to make this video because I know a lot of you are going to be doing builds and upgrades this summer. It's a very popular time for upgrades and I wanted to sort of head off some of the buying decisions you guys are gonna make to kind of make you think a little bit differently before you go and spend your money. Nothing sucks more than buyer's remorse because you found out you overspent somewhere and you could have had this instead that would have been better as a whole after the fact. And returning PC hardware usually comes with some sort of a restocking fee or a no return policy at all once it's been used depending on where you buy it from. So I'm trying to avoid that happening. If you guys have topics you want us to talk about this summer, make sure you comment down below or hit me up on Twitter. We are gonna be taking obviously a lot of subject matter directly from our audience. And don't forget, every single summer I like to do water cooling month. So we're gonna have a lot of water cooling subjects coming up here in the very near future, because as the weather turns warm, so do your computers and we wanna stop that from happening. All right guys, thanks for watching. And as always, we'll see you in the next one. I asked them once, is it Asus or Asus? And they said, just remember Dr. Seuss? Asus. Yeah. Okay, why don't you spell it A S O O S? Asus. Asus. Hey, sus. Hey. Sus, dude. <laughs>